Okay, then let's look at the next process that we're going to discuss relating to the manufacturing of polymetric composites in this unit. So that is what we call the sheet molding compound process. So otherwise we call it SMC. So this short video explains some aspects relating to the sheet molding compound process. Sheet molding compounds consist of two layers of resin paste with a flat layer of chopped and or unidirectional glass fibers sandwiched between. Typical sheet molding compounds contain 30% glass fibers by weight. The resin pastes are typically either polyester or vinyl compounds. These compounds commonly incorporate fillers, additives and other materials to reduce material shrinkage during molding, increase dimensional part stability, and to reduce overall material costs. Sheet molding compounds are manufactured in rolls of various thicknesses up to about one quarter inch or six millimeters. Once manufactured, these rolls are used immediately or stored while the molding compound matures to the desired molding viscosity. Sheet molding compounds are produced sandwiched between thin polyethylene films to aid in handling. This film is removed from the sheet molding compound before compression molding. Okay, then as was explained in the video, in this process, in the sheet molding compound process, we have uh, the two layers of uh, the resin paste, and in between, we can place some reinforcements as we need, right? So that reinforcement can be of up to 30% by weight, actually. So the, the most commonly used matrix or the resin materials are the polyesters and vinyl materials. So those are the materials that we use uh, to sandwich the, the reinforcement in between, right? So here you can see the schematic diagram of the, the process actually. So if you try to understand the, the processing mechanism here, you could see the carrier film and then on top of that film, so then we should have a resin paste, uh, the first layer of the resin material or the matrix material. So then after that, so then we can just uh, the, chop these uh, the, the glass fibers into short form. So it could be mostly continuous fibers that you feed into the machine and then it's automatically chopped into short uh, the, the fiber format. And then, so after that, it will spread uh, on top of that, uh, the, the, uh, the resin paste uh, while these, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the belt is conveyed. Okay, so in that way, so then this, uh, the, uh, the fiber material can randomly uh, the disperse or randomly place on top of the first resin paste. Okay, so then after that, so then we can uh, the, uh, place the, the second resin paste uh, on top of the reinforcement layer. So then we can sandwich the reinforcement in between uh, two different uh, the, the layers of the reinforcement, right? So then after that, so we manufacture this, uh, the, the sheet molding compound, which is including some reinforcements depending on the, the, the ratios that we need. So then after that, so we can cut that uh, the sheet molding compound into the required length and shapes uh, uh, then, then we can just use that immediately, or then we can store it uh, to be used in later stage. Actually, right? If you, if you are planning to just store the uh, the sheet molding compound after manufacturing without using it immediately, so then we have to make sure to provide the required storage conditions, like the temperatures that we're going to store, especially. So otherwise, the resin material could be cured uh, the before using them in actual product. Okay, so that is really important here. Right, so then I hope you understand it's a really simple process. So we have uh, the two layers of resin and then in between we can place some uh, the, the, uh, the reinforcements which are in short fiber form and then that can be just used immediately after the production or, or we can just uh, store it for later use, right? So in this process, we can choose the, the required uh, the, the resin material, uh, either polyester vinyl material or any other suitable material. And also we can select the required uh, the, the type or the, uh, the size of the reinforcement material. It could be mostly gas fiber, or we can use uh, the, some other reinforcements if it is compatible with the process. Hope you understood the process. It's a quite simple process actually, right? So then once we manufacture this, and then we can just uh, pre-measure the, the weight of the, the, uh, the sheet molding compound, or uh, the, we can cut it into the desired size, depending on the, the, the product that we're going to manufacture. Hope it is clear. 
Okay, here we can see some of the potential, uh, the products that we can manufacture using the sheet molding compound process actually. So here you can see that sheet molding compound process began to uh, the, the evolve as a potential manufacturing techniques or became popular uh, in early to uh, mid 1980s actually. So this process is mostly used to manufacture these car body panels. You can see that here. So we can achieve the, the class A finish actually. So that means, uh, so it's a really uh, the good surface finish that we can achieve. So normally we need uh, the single sided component in these applications. So then uh, we can just have really smooth surface while achieving the desired properties from the product. Because trucks were the big users actually for this process like uh, the truck cabs and also the ERF cab in the UK. So you could see the ERF cab here. So then this, uh, the body panel uh, uh, has been manufactured uh, using the sheet molding compound in most of the cases actually. And also two other potential applications were the body panels for the Renault and also the minivans uh, for the, uh, the Chesla. Uh, so you can see here the, the, uh, the photographs of these uh, vehicles here you could see that uh, the, you could get uh, the very large body panels manufactured using this uh, sheet molding component process. And also the surface finish is really good. And then we can just apply some uh, paints on top of that. So then it is really compatible or really suitable for manufacturing body panels. So that is why the sheet molding compound is really popular in automotive industry to manufacture the body panels for vehicles here. Okay. So here you can see that to reduce uh, the pipe attrition, thermosetting molding compounds may be injection molded using specialized molding machines. So here you can see that the mixture of the resin and the reinforcements. Okay, so then we can use a special type of injection molding machine to inject this uh, the uh, mixture uh, to manufacture the product. Okay, so then here actually, uh, as we discussed before, normally injection molding machines are having a, a reciprocating uh, the screw. And also it has uh, the rotary motion to convey the material. In here, the injection machine used for sheet molding compound, uh, the will have uh, the uh, ram rather than a screw actually. So you can see the arrangement of the injection machine in this case actually. So then here the paste inside, okay, or the compound inside the machine. And so then uh, the, the compound can just, uh, the post through this aperture actually, so a small hole. And then after that, we inject it to the uh, the uh, the mold cavity. Uh, then uh, we can just cure it into the suitable conditions, and then we can manufacture uh, the required part. So here you can see the arrangement of a process now. So then here we can inject the the compound uh, through these nozzles here in this arrangement, and then after that we can manufacture some of the products like the tailgates, right? So then you could see the first use to produce tailgates for the the Citroen BX. Right, so again, for uh, the, some type of uh, the automotive products, uh, the, therefore the nature of the sheet molding compound process is really suitable for that type of products actually. So we can have the resin paste and some uh, the reinforcements in between, uh, then uh, it could increase the strength of the structure. At, at the same time, so we can go for some uh, relatively small thicknesses. So that is uh, the required for some of the, the uh, products like car body panels. So we have to go into some uh, relatively small thicknesses and then Therefore, the nature of the sheet molding compound process is suitable, especially for uh, that type of products like uh, the car body panels. So we can have the resin paste and then in between some short fibers uh, sandwiched. So that is uh, the, uh, really good to improve the strength of the structure. And therefore, uh, the, this process is most commonly used to manufacture the product relating to the automotive industry. But this process can be used for the other applications as well, depending on the nature of the products. Uh, so you can see uh, the, some of the, the videos relating to uh, this process actually so this is really important uh, and we can go for a mass scale production this is a simple process but we can get a very good uh, the class a finish of the surface as well as the required structural properties uh, from the product as well so that is why this is really uh, popular in most of the, the the applications in the automotive industry well, here there's a nice video to explain how the vehicle body panels are manufactured. So you can just watch this uh, the video in this YouTube, uh, the link as well. At Continental Structural Plastics, the production of a Class A body panel or closure begins with the raw materials. TCA Ultralight, the advanced composite used to produce Class A body components, is made at our compounding facility in Van Wert, Ohio. Between the Van Wert facility and our compounding facility in Graybill, Indiana, 
CSP is the largest compounder and manufacturer of advanced composites in the world. Our advanced composites are widely used in the automotive industry for a number of class A and structural applications because they're as light as aluminum and won't dent, rust, or corrode like a metal part will. In addition, advanced composites can be molded into complex shapes or integrated parts, allowing designers to achieve unique styling cues while reducing assembly complexity. To begin production of our advanced composites for class A surfaces, raw materials are delivered to our compounding facilities by rail or tanker truck. Once inside, the materials to make TCA Ultralight are mixed and blended according to CSP's proprietary formulation. To ensure quality and product consistency, our in-house chemical labs continually test the materials for viscosity and other significant properties. The compounding process begins with a roll of plastic film fed through the transport system. The machine then deposits a layer of resin compound on the film. Then the chopped glass cut from stranded rovings is dropped on the resin in random orientation. In the next step, the upper layer of resin film is placed on the lower layer to form the composite. The material then goes through a compaction roller system or any excess air trapped between the layers is removed. The material is kneaded to wet the glass fibers with the resin and it is pressed to the desired thickness. The composite is then packed in shipping festoons and taken to the maturation room where it'll be stored for one to three days. Once optimal viscosity is achieved, it is shipped off to one of our manufacturing facilities to be molded into components, including Class A body panels. The Class A surface finish process. The production of Class A components begins with the delivery of raw TCA ultralight material to the press. Raw materials are selected according to first in, first out best practices by trained operators. Upon delivery to the press, the festoon is placed in a temperature controlled box and then attached to a slitter, which pulls material from the festoon and winds up the protective plastic film on mandrels. The slitter indexes the material to pre-programmed lengths and cuts the charges as determined by process engineering. The press operator follows work instructions to weigh and prepare each charge and then geometrically arrange it on the tool in the press. Charges are placed precisely in the press to ensure uniform, consistent quality parts. Once molded, parts are removed from the press and placed in specially designed cooling racks. After a part has cooled down, it is deflashed before going to the dry guide process. At this step, the operator is checking the part for any possible pits or defects in the surface. From this point forward, the part will go through a number of punching, drilling, water jet, and bonding processes, depending on the application and volume. At the bonding cell, the part's surface is cleaned again and checked for any defects. It is then placed in the bonder, where adhesive is applied robotically to inner and outer assemblies, reinforcements, or other necessary components, as required by the specific application. Once through the bonder, Excess adhesive is deroped from the part and a quality check is performed before the part is placed on the rack and sent to the paint or prime line. As a full service supplier, CSP is able to prime coat or top coat our Class A components before shipping to the OEM assembly facility. All CSP Class A materials are able to withstand e-coat and paint oven processes without sacrificing any surface or mechanical properties. When priming for a customer, each part is carefully inspected before being placed on the paint rack, and then again when it emerges from the ovens at the end of the prime process. A final quality audit is performed on each part, and it is then placed on the shipping rack, ready to go to the OEM assembly facility. Once each shift, one part is selected to undergo extensive quality testing. Here, an operator performs a number of tests to check for surface finish, gloss, paint adhesion and thickness, and overall paint quality. In other instances, the component is primed and then top coat painted by CSP in one of our state-of-the-art robotic paint facilities, where similar quality audits and surface evaluations take place 
to ensure top quality components are shipped to the customer. In some cases, these painted parts undergo final assembly processes and are sequenced for just-in-time delivery to the OEM for final vehicle assembly. I think it was a really nice demonstration of the, the complete process of manufacturing a full body part using uh, the, the sheet molding compound process. Actually, the initial stage was the sheet molding compound process. So we just uh, the use uh, the, the resin paste and the, the reinforcement material chopped into the desired length. And also then uh, the, it's just a sandwich between uh, the, the two layers of the, the, uh, the resin. The arrangement of the reinforcement was really random. And then after manufacturing the, the part, so then it was just uh, stored uh, in some certain conditions and then, then can be delivered to the manufacturing uh, the plant uh, to get some part manufactured using the sheet molding compound. Hope you could get a very good idea about the sheet molding compound process by watching this video. And then actually the, it is a simple process uh, if you have the required facilities and then the rest of the, the, uh, the stages in manufacturing the car body panel or any component could be complicated. So therefore manufacturing of some advanced composite could be complicated. So you start with the raw material and then you have to go through number of stages uh, until you get the, the final product. Okay then, so this is all I want to discuss on the sheet molding compound process. You can watch other videos or then uh, the read some uh, the article relating to the process to get the pros and cons and so on. And then uh, the next we can look at the RTM process or the resin transfer molding process.